how to get your RFC number in Mexico. The RFC number stands for Registro Federal de Contribuyente. It's basically an alphanumeric number that's very much like the SIN number or social insurance number in Canada or the social security number in the USA. You need it for many things and the list is growing in Mexico. Buying a new car, buying property, land, even opening a bank account. There was a time where some banks and some um, used car lots and stuff with would fudge the RFC number, but no more. The current administration in Mexico is very serious about starting to track money flow in the country and getting all its citizens in line for tax purposes. And so it's becoming more and more. In fact, it's a now a legal requirement if you're over the age of 18 to have an RFC number, whether you're a temporary resident, a, a permanent resident, or a legal citizen of Mexico. Getting your residency, either temporary or permanent, doesn't automatically get you an RFC number. It's super easy to do though, and you can do it yourself. So if you are a permanent or temporary resident and you hold a green card with a CURP number, you will at some point be required and legally you are required to get an RFC number. So I'm gonna make this really easy. It's three easy steps. You're going to make yourself an appointment online. You're going to gather all the important documents that you'll need at the appointment. And then you're gonna go down physically to your appointment and get the RFC number. It really is that easy. I was super nervous about it and if i can do it speaking a limited amount of spanish then you can do it too the first point is make an appointment online you want to go to this website here www.citas.sat.gob.mx and this is where we're going to schedule an appointment and the first thing that pops up for you should be a privacy notice you're just going to click at the bottom set out is to close and we're going to use these two tabs but not right away the first thing you're going to do is click here to register an appointment. CETA is appointment. Later on, after you get the email that you have made an appointment, you're going to come back in here. Um, so two, two days later after you get your email or a week later, you'll click this, but not right now. Right now you want to click to register an appointment. So here's your options. When we did it the first time, there were only three options. Now there's four options. You certainly want to click the one that says personas físicas. That's a physical person. You want to go in person to do your appointment and get your um, RFC number. So click the third option. And here, just scroll down and you're going to enter your CURP number from your residency card, your full name, and then your email. Confirm your email and we're going to hit next. So I'll go ahead and do that. Just click that you accept the terms and conditions and a CAPTCHA will pop up. Fill in the CAPTCHA and hit next. Siguiente. Now just a little side note, if you're searching in Google, you might have a translate button here. Go ahead and click it. It will actually work on this web page, but I don't use Google as my search. I use Quant. Quant just doesn't remember any search data cookies, so I don't have the um, Google translate button up there. Okay, so now you're going to get a calendar with a bunch of dates. Don't click that yet. What you want is to click what kind of service do you want. In the drop down bar, we want to subscribe to the RSE for a physical person. Then this is where you're going to choose which state in Mexico you would like to go into the SAT office. So think ahead, where are you going to be at the time of applying and click that state. Then this is where it gets a little interesting. You're gonna get a whole bunch of offices within the state that you choose. Choose one of them and what happens is, we'll read this in a second, but below where you have chosen here an office, it will give you the address. So you can actually cross reference this address, type this address into Google Maps and find out if it's actually close to you or not. If you don't like this one, just go back up here, choose a different office and choose the one that makes the most sense for you then this pop-up is just telling you that right now, and this is really normal, they don't have any appointments that you can choose directly right now online. You have to go into a virtual lineup. And so that's what this is, fila virtual. It's a virtual filas line or queue. And so once you click this, then you're entered into the system and you're in a virtual lineup. You will wait and at the email that you entered on the last page, they're gonna give you a email notification saying, you have made it to the front of the line and here's your appointment date. 
They give you five minutes to do it. Don't panic. If you need time to cross-reference all your addresses, just take the time that you need. Go back in again if you expire, enter everything in again, and it'll be smooth the second time around for you. So after you're in the virtual lineup, you wanna keep checking your email often. Keep checking it, check your junk file also to make sure that you get the confirmation that you actually have a physical appointment at the SAT office that you selected. Another way you can check is to go back to this original website and instead of making an appointment here like we did the first time, you wanna click consultar. When you click consultar, you're gonna go down. Don't worry that you don't have an RFC number yet. Click here and then you can enter your CURP number. Enter your CURP number, enter the email that you um, registered your virtual appointment with, enter the CAPTCHA, hit next, and it will tell you which place in virtual line you are. So that way you will have all the chance in the world to not miss your appointment. Sometimes the email will come only one or two days before they put you uh, in an appointment time and time slot at the office. So you wanna keep checking the CITES website to find out when your actual physical appointment is. The second step is to gather five important pieces of information that you will need to have and carry with you to your appointment. The first is your passport. The second is your residency card. The third information is going to be original bill for utilities. It has to be the original. So if it's your own property, you'll have that. If you're like us and you were renting a property, we just simply ask the landlord for one of her recent electricity or water bill. The fourth piece of paper will be a printout of your CURP. And that's very easy to find. And I'll link below the website you go to print that out. And then the fifth thing to bring is a thumb drive. Some people have said, like us, they didn't even ask for it, so we weren't sure why we had it. But other offices in different states in Mexico put some kind of a key on there that you need to plug into your laptop and open it up to get, I guess, your RFC number or something. We didn't even need it, but you know, they're so inexpensive, why not just have it with you just in case? Well, if you're getting any value from this video, clicking like and subscribe, help us keep these videos coming for you. Okay, the third step is you're going for your appointment. Now, some people will hire a facilitator to go with them to the office to do a bunch of translating, and you can do that. There's services for all kinds of stuff in Mexico and many other countries around the world. We just found that even with just a limited amount of Spanish, that when I went to the office to get my RFC number, the man was trying to talk to me in some real beautiful flowing Espanol, and I was like, lo siento, no entiendo. I, I just couldn't understand all of the words he was saying. But he was trying to ask me something about my house. What color is it? What size is it? And I'm like, dude, I'm renting. So, you know, just be friendly. Just let him know I'm so sorry I don't understand. And he just filled in everything anyways, answered the questions with me the best I could with limited Espanol, and that was it. So there's nothing to be worried about. You've received the email. You see what date and time they want you to be at the office. You're getting ready to go. Have your five pieces of a documentation that we just went through. It might be slightly different at the SAT office that you go to, but I went to one of the two offices in Guadalajara. And when I walked up to the office, there was a whole bunch of people outside milling around. The first thing you have to do is go up, if there's a front outside booth, the weather's usually probably gonna be nice, go up to the front booth and there's a guy there and he kind of just checks, hey, are you, are you supposed to be here? What's your name? Do you have an appointment? Once he confirms, yeah, you're cool to be here, he has you stand to the side. So I waited there for about 10, 15 minutes and pretty soon he called my group number and then I was allowed to line up outside. I'm still not even in the building yet. So I waited in the lineup for another 10 minutes or so and pretty soon my line went into the building. Soon as I got into the building, there was a second facilitator man there and he checked all my documents again. He made sure I had everything that the actual officer was going to need. He made sure I had my original electric bill, uh, the printout of the appointment. He made sure that I had my passport, my residency card and all that. He made sure all the documents were in order. Once that was a check, he directed me in past him into some waiting seats beside the booth number that I was going to be sitting at. I waited there for another five minutes and then pretty soon I got up off the last chair and I went to go sit in front of the immigration officer. This is where the immigration officer tried to talk to me a little bit in Espanol and we did pretty good. Buenos dias and all of that. And I just handed him my paperwork and kind of just sat back and smiled and waited. 
When the questions started coming, I did my best. There is no uh, internet available in there, so you can't really use Google Translate, but he was so gracious. And I swear, I was only sitting there less than 10 minutes and he stamped and did everything and he took all my papers, passport, had me sit back down in the chair directly behind him and I waited. About 10 minutes after that, a lady came out with all of my documentation, a printout of an official SAT paper with my RFC number written on there and I was free to go. It really was easy peasy. I'm not just saying this because I'm making a video for you. If I can do it with just a few Spanish phrases in my vocabulary, then you really can do it too. Follow my video, save it, watch it again. And if you know anybody else who needs this process done, feel free to share the video. If you ever want to buy a piece of property or a brand new car in Mexico, you'll need this RFC number. If you want to buy a used car in Mexico and you're a resident, we've got a video on that too. It's coming to me. It's something original.